All right, so very happy Bulldogs camp. Uh, but as you can see here, Anthony Griffin straight into the sheds addressing his troops. And I mentioned the fact that the Dragons had a comprehensive win yeah. over the Broncos yeah. last week. They arrived today, you think that's something to build on. And I, I know the Broncos aren't going great at the moment. But he would have to be awfully disappointed yeah. mm. with the lack of intensity and the lack of detail in that performance. Well, I mean, they still conceded 24 points against the Brisbane Broncos last week. And again, today, those flaws reared their head defensively. They've got some real issues there. When things go well for the Dragons, Hunt, Norman, Dufty can, can put you away with their attack. They, they love being on the front foot. But we saw today when they got uh, challenged through the middle physically um, and frustration started to set in and they had to play off the back foot, they just... There was no spark there. There was nothing at all. That was one of the worst Dragons performances I've seen for a long time today. They, they were ordinary. That's their personality at the moment, though, isn't it? They're, they're an up-and-down side. They're, yeah. they're there one week, they're not, they're not the next. And yeah, but Kendi, today, even they're, the they're sitting in eighth position mm. with the, the Raiders, the Sharks and the Warriors something all level. Something to fight for. Absolutely yeah. something to fight for. Mm. Yeah, and their form hasn't been great of late, albeit that they towed the Broncos up last week. They lost three in a row before that. Yeah. You know, so... What's the form line with the with the Broncos as well? I mean, yeah. to take out of that, mm. I mean that, that performance last week, week was good, but even today they were dominating early on in that game, and it was that one kick from Ben Hunt that went dead, and he yeah. was in total control. And Brandy said it in the call. This is the best I've seen him play. Brandy actually said that in the call. He came up with that poor kick that led to seven tackles, and then they were gone. Yeah, they showed no resolve, no resilience whatsoever. But that, that that seems the way for the bottom. 10 teams, yeah. mm. is that when the blowtorch gets applied, and look, to be fair, that's not something Canterbury's done often this year, but they did it tonight. You know, they started in the middle. All those players you've already mentioned, you know, Luke Thompson, Jack Hetherington, Dylan Narper when he came yeah. off the bench, yeah. you yeah. know, really took it to the Dragons forwards. And when the Dragons made a couple of mistakes and the Bulldogs lifted their intensity, they just did not handle it at all. And I know you asked Paul Vaughan, about this roster overhaul that's happening at the Dragons at the moment. There's a few clubs going through it. But when you've got two key players, yeah, your 5'8 and your, and your fullback, mm. who've been told they're unwanted, that has an impact on them. Mm. And their attitude, I'm assuming, then has an impact on the rest of the team. It's hard to produce consistent performances as a side when you're saying to key players, we don't want you as part of our future. But hang on, last week, one of those players, Matt Dufty, was the star of the show. I, I get it. I'm talking it's, about it's consistency. Hard, hard, I, I think it's hard as a player. I know he was great last week. And, and uh, James Graham in, in the pre-game show today he couldn't believe the resilience he's shown considering the criticisms that Duffy has had. And he's been tapped and said, see you later. But you can't hold that for the whole year. He's distracted. It's, it's, it's it was a distraction. the Raiders this week, no, was he Norman's not getting been great. Norman's yeah. been great until this afternoon. And he, apparently last week he got told that he won't be needed at the club And started longer. this game well. Yeah, it's... Yeah. So I, I, I just don't know whether or not we're going to see the best of the Dragons. Well, it's when while... the shit hits the fan too, is, that, is when you see the real side. You know, when you get in a bit of trouble. And that, look, we didn't see any resolve or resilience this afternoon. They didn't work together as a side. I think that says a lot about where they are mentally at the moment. Well, it creates an environment of uncertainty. Definitely. And if, if, if you guys think back to your playing days, the one thing you wanted, you know, in a, a really tough competition that is difficult every week, is to know where you stand, what your future is, because this is a brutal collision sport. And if you're second guessing your future, you're second guessing your approach to your preparation, then you're not gonna get the best from yourself every week. But they've still got six months worth of pay, and they've got six months to find new deals. Like, they're professional footballers. Yeah, they are. But all I'm saying is, yeah, um, you you will not get their best. It, oh, it can be know, a subconscious look, thing. It, it, it doesn't have to be it's conscious. It's a sport when we want it to be a sport, and it's a business when we want it to be a business. Yeah. You're, uh, you're right in a lot of ways, Kenny. But the other part of it too is confidence. And you know, if you look at those two players in particular, Dufty and Norman, they've played their best football when they're confident. And if you look at the start of this season, for Corey Norman, he thought probably that the the, com uh, the combinations that he's had, obviously with Andrew McCulloch and Ben Hunt, the mm -hmm. fact that he's worked with Anthony Griffin, who was coming in, part of him subconsciously thought, well, I'm a chance of staying here because of those relationships. He started to play some decent footy. Now all of a sudden he's being told he's out the door. I get the sense of the personality, of, without knowing Corey that well, that his confidence has just gone straight through. Uh, over the hill because yeah. he doesn't know where he stands anymore as Ben said and regardless of your pay packet confidence has a huge impact on your performance. The other thing is look he, his manager's been shopping him around mm. for at least three months 
and has not got a nibble. Mm. And in fact, they've actually gone to the market basically with a, a notional value of half of what is currently on. Yeah. Still not getting a lot of interest. Mm. So it's not like this could be a shock to, yeah. to Corey Norman. I don't, it's not like it's come out of the blue and point. suddenly, mate, you're, you're, where has this come yeah. from? You're right, right but yeah. once you roll from one key player into the next key player going through the same experience, all you need to be is what, you know, particularly if you're in the, yeah. you know, those bottom 10 teams, if you get a couple of key players who are 5 and 10% off, yeah. it can have a bit of big effect on the rest of the team. Yeah. Dufty got his pants pulled down today. A bit of just justification for, for Hook. I mean, we've all been saying, why are they getting rid of him? And he came up with you know, seven try involvements last week against the Broncos, five try assists and two tries. And then in defence, he was, he was poor this afternoon. So it kind of stood out to us maybe why they're looking to move him on. Well, he said that on this show, did he not, Anthony Griffin? What would you like to see more of from Matt Dufty? Mm. Better work off well, the ball. Everyone mm. talked about his game last <laughs> week against Broncos. Seven try involvements, right? Broncos scored four tries yeah. and he was responsible, for, yeah, at, at, at least in some part, not entirely all his, but he was responsible in some part for all four that the Broncos scored. That's, that's the other part of the game that people don't realise. We saw that the try that broke their back tonight was the uh, Marshall, Marshall King try out of yeah. dummy half where he was the yeah. A defender, what they call it, the, the guy first, first off from the, the play of the ball. Yeah. And just totally overread the dummy, and he was gone. And Marshall King dummies, he goes in behind him and scores. And that—that's what broke St George.